Welcome to USAID's Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. I'm your producer, Nika Larian. 30 to 40% of the food that is produced is either lost or wasted, contributing to a global food crisis with over 800 million going to bed hungry. Listen on as USAID experts speak with researchers and development professionals to explore solutions to this critical issue that demands a kitchen sink approach. When it comes to climate, food security, and food system sustainability, we have no time to waste. Thanks for tuning in to USAID's Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. My name is Nika Larian, Senior Food Safety Advisor and Producer of The Kitchen Sink. Today, I will be speaking with Ben Collier, CEO of FarmLink, which connects farms with surplus food to food banks to feed people in need and reduce carbon emissions. Great, uh, ben, it was really great hearing FarmLink's story at the ReFed Food Waste Summit in Baltimore this June. So before we dive in, can you share with our listeners a bit of your story? Sure, and thank you so much for having me here, Nika. Um, my story is more boring than FarmLink's story, but we started FarmLink in April of 2020 when I was a junior at Brown University. So I was studying math, applied math at the time, which I don't use a whole lot. Um, but leading up to the pandemic, I'd actually had a really major uh, reconstructive foot and leg surgery. And so even before the pandemic started, I was looking ahead as a now former college athlete thinking, I have no idea what the next couple of years of my life are going to be like. I have no idea where my sense of community is going to come from. Suddenly, the pandemic starts and everyone else is in the same position. And while we'll probably talk a little bit more about FarmLink's tactical impact, the community that came out of FarmLink in that first year was an incredible saving grace for me and so many other people that found a sense of purpose and a sense of belonging in a time when that was really hard to come by. Absolutely. I, I think one of the great things I've I've learned from many of the conversations that we've had on the podcast is there are a lot of instances of really great community building that happens around efforts to reduce food loss and waste. So I'm excited to, to keep the conversation going. Um, USAID recently hosted a food loss and waste workshop with the Aspen Global Change Institute, USDA, Tufts University, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And during this workshop, which, which also happened in June, right before the, the ReFed conference, there was a lot of conversation around the need for standard definitions for food loss and waste. And I think this is interesting because FarmLink has its own definition for food loss and waste, which is abundance. So can you shed some light on this and how this definition of food loss and waste as abundance lends itself to FarmLink's mission? I love this question. Um, abundance is how we refer to food that could still benefit somebody that is otherwise destined to be labeled as surplus and ultimately end up as waste. Food is not waste until it is wasted though. And the reality is in America, we see over 150 billion pounds of food go to waste every single year. And over 80 billion pounds of that go to waste before that food even makes it to grocery stores and restaurants. So it's in transit or just on farms or in storage uh, before it gets there. And so, what we prioritize at FarmLink is identifying the moments of abundance, the moments where there is huge amounts of fresh food surplus beyond what local hunger fighting organizations are able to recover themselves. That's where FarmLink steps in. And we work with every eligible hunger fighting organization we can to react to those moments and get as much food that can benefit communities as possible to those communities. I'll also share, actually, that Abundance is the name of our documentary, which uh, we were able to build uh, over the last couple of years and then share uh, over the last year. It is the story of how we got started as a bunch of college kids who really knew nothing about this at the beginning of the pandemic. Where it took us was uh, incredible. I mean, last July, we got to uh, share and screen this documentary in the U.S. Capitol, which has led to relationships with members of the USDA and uh, state secretaries and departments of agriculture that have really propelled some of our growth over the last year. So a lot of credit to abundance. 
I'm so glad you mentioned um, the film. We'll definitely be sure to to link to that in our episode description, so listeners can can watch that and learn even more about FarmLink's story. And I really like the how you framed food loss and waste um, as as abundance and viewing food loss and waste as an opportunity. It's it's obviously a challenge. Food waste is a huge challenge, and we need to think big when we're thinking of solutions to tackle it. But we're doing um, several episodes and, and kind of a mini series right now on the podcast around food rescue and food recovery. And I think it's it's really beautiful how these efforts are really shifting to view food and, and potential food waste as an opportunity. And I think that's a really important narrative shift that, that needs to happen. Obviously, we want to make everyone aware of the problem and the magnitude of the problem and the consequences of food loss and waste. But I think it's also important to have this element of positivity, of community building, of um, of opportunity for up, upcycling food or repurposing food. So um, I really appreciate that that nod to to a narrative shift. And and speaking of of shifting the narrative and thinking big, at, at Refed, you encourage the crowd to join the shared plate pledge. So can you talk a little bit more about the goal of the pledge and who can join? Sure. There are a million pledges, and I think it's probably hard to keep track of them at this point, if you're in the food loss and waste space. Um, ours is about as non-committal as a pledge can be. Um, when we started FarmLink, we encountered pretty quickly that the food banking space is surprisingly and frustratingly territorial at times. Not the fault of any individual member that is working to better feed their communities, but the reality is food banks are designed to capture surplus food around them, and our food system creates surplus inconsistently throughout different regions of this country. And so frequently you get moments where there's way more than the local hunger fighting organizations can handle, but they're not necessarily designed to prioritize figuring out how that food can get to other communities who can benefit from it. And so early on in FarmLink, we saw a lot of instances where a food bank would have access to a million pounds of cucumbers, they'd take a fifth of it, and the other 80% would go to waste. And there have been moments where FarmLink's been specifically boxed out of going after the extra food because we're interrupting an existing relationship or we're confusing the donor or a handful of other reasons that, quite frankly, um, I, I don't think hold up in court. And so the shared plate pledge is not a set of principles about exactly how food banks should operate. It is a set of values that we believe center the work that will advance the space as a whole. And the, the, the values are prioritizing innovation that allows us to rescue more food and serve more quality food to folks who could benefit from it around collaboration to see to it that when you have more of a resource than you need, it is a part of your mission to get that to another community who can benefit from it. And inclusion in how we look at the solutions that we're working towards. Um, you can't own a donor, for instance, that's, that's oxymoronic, but the pledge speaks to about how donor choice will really improve the outcomes in the work that we're working towards. And so I encourage anyone to go and check it out and, and reach out to us if you have questions or thoughts about it. It's not some, formally cement, cemented piece of literature that can never change. The whole point is to say, this is what we hold ourselves accountable to at FarmLink, and we invite others in the space who view this work similarly to do so as well. And 